robbing people. It's Dante, and today I'm on the streets of Monte Rome. Welcome to the freestyle vlog. Filming with the GoPro Mini at 1080p, 30fps, exported to 720p for that crispy HD quality. Um, yeah, today I have a few thoughts on my mind and I'm going to speak freely and candidly. Um, so yeah, firstly, I was thinking about this nomadic lifestyle, right? Become the Uber nomad. Um, personally, I can only spend like 10 months maximum in a row in the United States. I feel like having like a month to two months each year to travel is vital for uh, photographers, right? I believe this um, to be a really important part of my life to travel, to conquer, to seek new lands to just go out and to experience new things. Um, yeah, at least once per year, I think is a good, uh, a good goal to have. Um, consider your legacy, right? Legacy. I think that uh, as you think more into the future, yeah, you should be considering your legacy and what you can maybe leave behind, right? As an artist, you know, you want to leave behind your work, you want to leave behind your legacy, right? Think of Sebastião Salgado. Right, this guy, what a prolific photographer he is. And not only did he succeed within the realm of photography and create incredible works of art, he's also revitalized his family's land and planted millions of trees. I mean, if that's not a legacy, then I don't know what is. Um, Imagine him, Salgado, naming all of his trees, leaving his trees behind with his legacy attached to them. Um, for years and years, right? How long does a tree last? How long do trees stand for? You know, that's legacy. Millions of trees planted by Salgado. And uh, I just think it's an inspiring thing. Uh, you know, obviously uh, procreation, right? Having one child, having an heir, at least one heir is probably a way to kind of, you know, succeed in a sense of uh, you know, achieving that legacy, right? Leaving a, leaving a physical human on the planet when you're gone. Molto caldo. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, some thoughts on being a nomad, legacy. I think that, you know, memes are interesting to me, right? Like a meme, what is a meme? I feel like a meme, a meme is the lowest, you know, common denominator of, of knowledge itself. It's the smallest unit of knowledge, right? I think that's a good way to think of it, right? It's knowledge, memes are, uh, this sort of uh, modern way of communicating, right? Think of uh, Pepe the Frog, right? Feels good, man. Ah, doesn't the sun feel good, man? Like that's a meme, the sun should be a meme. Let's meme the sun immediately. Everyone go out into the sun and, and uh, you know, absorb the rays. It'll make you instantly happy. Maybe that should be a new meme, right? The sun feels good, man. Just uh, add the word sun before that meme with Pepe the Frog and, uh, you know, create that uh, and propagate that. You know, I think that real good ideas are mimetic, right? A good idea will have others repeating that thing, will have others thinking that way. And yeah, I believe that considering memes in the modern world of social media and things like this, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting, right? A meme is the smallest unit of knowledge, right? This is how ideas are spread, right? Um, through images, right? Through photography, actually, a lot of the time, right? Images are used to spread information, to spread news, to spread media. I believe that maybe there are some things to be said about photography being a change 
for good in the world, right? Maybe you can change the world with photography. Um, you know, while I do believe it's an ultimately selfish act where you're going out there and you're making pictures for yourself in an autotelic approach, I still do believe that, you know, a photograph can change the perception uh, of a place or a thing or a person for the viewer. And I believe actually the, the key ingredient to making change through photography is changing yourself, right? So by smiling at strangers more, interacting with more people, actually uh, being like the ripple, starting the wave, and you know, spreading joy with others, right? So by being out on the street and the act of photographing, I believe um, we can maybe spread some change in the world. And uh, yeah, I think that it's a noble thing to strive uh, towards. You know, there's nothing wrong with trying to achieve this as a goal, right? To change the world through photography. I think it's actually kind of noble. Um, yeah, why not? But I think the idea is that you must change uh, yourself in order to change the world, right? And I think a good way to do that is through virtue, right? Virtue, follow virtue, right? Become morally good. What is good? I'm not sure if there's such thing, right? Good versus bad, good versus evil. Like there's kind of like this blurred line between it. I think that only you know what's best for you, right? Like there's no moral or ethical reasons why I don't drink alcohol. It's mostly just because I, uh, you know, don't see, uh, it as like a healthy thing for me where I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not looking to lower my testosterone, poison myself, etc. It's just like a personal choice. I don't feel good after drinking alcohol. Um, but to become morally exceptional, to strive towards virtue is a good thing, right? Where, you know, you show more courage, you become more brave, you become less emotional, right? You're able to control one's emotions, right? These are good things um, to consider. I believe that uh, following virtue, striving towards greatness, yeah, this ultimately is a good thing. Fear not. Walking towards the Colosseum here. Beautiful, beautiful sight there in the background. Walking on the old cobblestone roads. Feels really good on the barefoot shoes, right? You know, an interesting thought I had is about, you know, the mindset of a homeless person and an extremely wealthy person. I believe that they share similar ideas, right? Where we don't care for possessions, right? We recognize that the things that really and truly matter in life are in the moment, in the physical flesh right now, right? The connection you have to other humans, family, God, Right? These things I believe are shared amongst homeless and wealthy people. Um, you know, real wealthy people. Yeah, this is like a real uh, thing I've been thinking about where, you know, maybe they're, they're not so different in a, in a, in a very uh, weird way, right? It's just a thought, just a thought, just a thought. Um, Yeah, let's go towards the uh, Colosseum here. You know, the gladiators were strong, brave, courageous people, right? Mostly enslaved. Um, but, uh, Slee, <laughs> you know. To me now, when I think of slavery, it's a mindset where you enslave yourself to the culture, the ways of doing things in the now and today's world. Um, yeah, you you, uh, you kind of put yourself in a position of slavery a lot of the time through trapping yourself to uh, one way of thinking. Um, I believe that like change is good, right? To like free yourself of any chains, free yourself of any one way of thinking, um, to sort of embrace other perspectives and change is a good thing. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's a, uh, you know, don't trust weak people. I don't know, there's something about that. Like if you can't lift weights and if you're not like working on yourself physically, how am I supposed to trust you mentally? So, 
Yeah, don't trust, uh, don't trust weak men. Now it's time to flex because I'm at the Coliseum after all. Let me just go over here. Flexing at the Coliseum. Become a gladiator. <laughs> 